it's hooping time. Today is a beautiful day. Super excited because it is like 16 or 17 degrees to get today, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just gorgeous. Um, spring is in the air, everything's blossoming. Birdies are tweeting. And it's bright, it's nice. Today I've got my color morph hoop. Reminds me of beetle wings. It also reminds me a bit of like an oil slick kind of situation. <laughs> it's the only taped hoop I have and the tape is already a little bit run down because um, I've been using it outdoors a whole lot. Kind of fell out of love with this hoop for a while but I'm totally getting back into it. This was also my very first hoop I ever got and uh, since then retaped it already once um, and it's not even it's not even uh, completely round anymore because it's already gotten so much use and gotten a bit of fall damage here and there but I still really really like it uh, it's a good size for me yeah at the time of this recording I haven't yet edited my last vlog so I don't actually know <laughs> if you guys will uh, are enjoying these kinds of videos or not um, I don't know I, I am I am really enjoying making them though like just the filming like having something to film is motivating me to do things and that's the whole point of these vlogs is just to document and to um, get me motivated or get me inspired to do things and uh, strike things off my long list of, of creative to do's so hey I'm having fun doing these and I hope you enjoy them somewhat I hope I can get them edited nicely so they're pleasing to watch yeah I've still got stuff going on but there is a little bit of time now for me to invest in creative stuff. I want to try and make something from my sewing list. I'm not sure yet exactly what, but I want to make something, however small. And thirdly, I have a few knit bits and a few odd loose ends that I want to tie up. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. I hope you enjoy and yeah, keep staying sane and safe. One of the smaller things I wanted to do was redress my People 65 Chloe Andromeda. I picked out the green medieval dress initially, but was reminded why I don't like it on her and it's got to do with her bust. The dress just looks too tight around her, well, boobage, <laughs> you know. So I ended up going with a different one and in hindsight I probably chose this one because it was well suited for the sewing project that I ended up tackling later on. Next, I decided it was that time of year again to do some spring cleaning, specifically a closet purge. I do this regularly, I just go through my wardrobe, see that what I'm not wearing anymore, and either donate or sell the items in question. As my personal style has evolved over the years, I find that I'm streamlining my closet more and more to suit my specific taste, but also becoming way more mindful of how much clothing I really need and also where I buy it. So this is the final tally. There's like four dresses here, a couple of tops, some pants, old pyjama tops and some underwear, old sports bras and yeah, a random velvet top that I found. All that is going to be gone and I think that's pretty good. So that's great. I'm going to go have lunch now and then I'm going to move on and continue with cleaning my shoes.
Another thing I tried to do was take some self-portraits with one of my dolls and my absolutely suitable for everyday errands hat that you saw me wear in the last video. This was pretty tedious, not gonna lie. And for some reason I managed to hold my doll just out of frame for almost every shot I took. Ugh, I definitely need more practice on that end. I also treated myself on a whim to a new little fountain pen I stumbled across. This is a Pelican Twist, a new line as far as I can tell, and I really like the feel and the grip of this little guy. I like its fat nib and I really dig this purple metallic colour. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this pen. It's been a bit of a slow day. I feel a little bit exhausted. Maybe because I stayed up until 3am playing video games. But I have decided on my next sewing project. When I was doing my closet purge the other day, I found this. And this is a crop top. I think one of two crop tops I have ever owned. <laughs> I think I never even wore this outside once. But I really like the fabric, this red velvet, and I love the colour too. And I thought, hang on, I could totally upcycle this and make it into a dice pouch for my D&D dice. Um, I've always wanted one of those dice pouches, but you know, I don't feel the need to buy one. Uh, but I, when I could totally make this into one. I also want to try adding some gold details because I think that look, would look super fancy and super nice. And uh, yeah, um, let's see how this works. Let me tell you, the number on this die is a critical foreshadowing of the sheer failure that was this project. <laughs> I wanted the pouch to look something like this, right? And I was super confident it wouldn't be a problem. So I started out by cutting open the crop top and laying it flat to get the most area for the circle shape. Then I sewed the two pieces front and back together, so far so good. Then I took the biggest plate I own and I drew a circle around it, to the edge of the fabric, trimmed off the excess and hemmed the edges. So far, this was going pretty well, until I decided I wanted to decorate the front of the pouch with gold thread. Embroidery thread, which I put into my sewing machine and, well, let's just say things went downhill from there. My fabric started to bunch up weirdly, there was ruching, the thread was breaking halfway through, and I just wanted to do a crisscross pattern on the front but after a while I gave up on the sewing machine and reverted to hand-stitching the remaining lines. After what felt like an eternity, I was finally done and I could go on to punch holes and insert the eyelets. And behold, my creation! It is complete, my creation. Well, so obviously this didn't go really well, and um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I screwed up um, quite heavily in this project, but I got something done. <laughs> no, okay, obviously I went into this project very unplanned, yeah? I, uh, I thought I could just make a dice patch out of a crop top. I basically just thought I could jump right into it and it will turn out great and it will be fantastic and now it's a hot mess. But these projects are always very valuable because you learn a lot. And I learned a lot through my mistakes with this thing. So let's just quickly talk about those. So first of all, the fabric. I had never worked with velvet before. And I, to no surprise, I struggled with it quite a bit. 
yes, let's talk about the embroidery thread. So that was my next mistake, using embroidery thread in a sewing machine. Complete beginner's mistake. Good lesson there. Actually surprised that some of the uh, seams worked. I don't know what happened. Divine intervention, obviously. And then quickly realized that the velvet was not taking this very well and not knowing why it was ruching together and what is it doing with my fabric and how I mean, huh, of course, embroidery thread's not meant to be used in the sewing machines, <laughs> who would have thought? Uh, actually, embroidering by hand is hard with embroidery thread. I have done it before, I actually did a presentation on embroidery uh, for my home economics course that I took at uni. So I thought I had this thing down and boy was I wrong and very out of practice with my stitches, with my hands, hand sewing. Yeah, the running stitch is like the most atrocious thing I think I've ever seen, but yeah, you know, it's all practice. So by the time I actually finished embroidering the whole thing, I was already quite over this project, which probably made me run headlong into my next mistake, and that is uh, using the wrong tools to insert eyelets. I, I had some cheap tools that came with the eyelets I bought off of eBay, it just was a set, and I thought, oh yeah, sure, fine, I'll just use that. And the result was horrible. The, the eyelets are completely skew, they're uneven, they're also really cheap eyelets. So I should have known better. I've used eyelets before and I used actually different set of tools that are um, usually used in jewelry making because my mum is a jeweler, I was able to, to borrow those. Because I've done eyelets before, I thought this was gonna be no problem and yeah, I rushed through it. Did a botched job, but also cheap eyelets, cheap tools not the right kind of tools and a uh, rush job and you end up with this. And also some construction errors that I should have known from the get-go, like you need to have an even number of holes. I mean, come on, <laughs> which I don't. Right at the end, I thought if all else fails, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be bunched up anyway. It's a dice patch, come on, how bad can it look? I'll just thread something through the holes and bunch it up and that'll be fine, like a drawstring effect and it, it, it just doesn't look fine. It doesn't look like anything at all. It looks like a blob. <laughs> and yeah, now I've made a blob officially. But like I said, this was a learning curve. We're gonna shelve this project. Next time we'll make a proper dice patch. And maybe, I mean, I'm not gonna throw this away. Maybe if I feel like it, I will turn this into something else. But for now, it remains a failure in the journey. But as you'll see now, luckily, my next project went a little better. Take a look. The next and significantly more successful project that I tackled was attempting to make a mock-up, not a finished garment, of a pair of stays for an SD-sized BJD. Now, I know everyone and their mothers have made stays on the internet recently, but what can I say, I'm equally susceptible to the inherent charm of historical clothing, especially these structured undergarments in question. My goal here was not complete historical accuracy, rather I wanted to scale the pattern to doll size and then see if it procures a workable outcome with which I can later produce a more proper version with lining, eyelets, <laughs> and all that. As you can see, I first carefully traced the pattern pieces and assembled them as they were in order to understand how the garment would look three-dimensionally. Then I scaled it to a size which I thought would be workable, there was some trial and error involved here, printed that out and double checked on the doll to see if it would actually fit. Once I thought I had a somewhat correct size, I took my fabric that I put aside for mock-ups only. This I bought ages ago, so I'm not quite sure what it is. I would guess linen, but judging by the coarse weave it could also be fustian, um, I'm not 100% sure. I then cut out the pattern pieces and stitched them together by hand.
Using an awl, I punctured some holes and threaded through some leftover ribbon. I was incredibly skeptical at first that it would actually fit my doll at all, pun unintended, but to my surprise, I just about got it to close again around her bust, leaving me with this. Not gonna lie, I was pretty happy with this. The fit in the back and on the sides is especially good, and now I have something to work with when I choose to make the proper thing. Some adjustments will have to be done, of course, but for now, I'm very pleased with this first draft of a garment. So how does one go from failed, simple project, seemingly simple project, to successful, more elaborate project? The answer lies in careful planning, a good portion of humble pie that keeps you from initially diving headfirst into something without giving it the thought that it deserves, and in the end that saves you time and frustration, and that's what I learned during the course of making these two projects. I hope you enjoyed coming along on this journey of ups and downs, highs and lows. Leave a like and comment what you think I could do with ye old failed dice pouch. I really wouldn't want to waste that fabric. Otherwise, subscribe if you'd like to stick around. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.